I love to eat my bread with flax seeds because they give a great flavor and texture to my breads. So, to start this recipe, I am measuring 100 grams or about 3 quarters of a cup in a glass container. Then, add 100 grams or 1 quarter of a cup of boiling water and let the flax seeds soak for about 2 hours. Soaking the flax seeds breaks down the gluten and makes the proteins in the seeds easier to digest. After two hours, place the seeds in a sieve and rinse well with cold water. Let the water drain as you continue with the recipe. Pour 300 grams or one and a quarter cups of water in a mixing bowl. Add 50 grams or three and three quarter tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil, which will make your bread softer and richer. And 115 grams or about half a cup of sourdough starter. Mix all the ingredients with a silicone spatula, or you can use a dough whisk for better results. Add 250 grams or one and three quarter cups of red flour. Mix with the dough whisk until all the flour incorporates well and add 10 grams or one and three quarter teaspoons of sea salt. Mix the salt very well with all the ingredients. Then add 125 grams or one cup of whole wheat flour. Mix the flour with the rest of the dough. And finally, add 125 grams or about one cup of spell flour. The spell flour will add a great nutty flavor to your bread. If you can find this flour, you can substitute it with whole wheat flour. Mix with the dough whisk and then use your hands to mix the dough well inside your bowl until there are no dry spots of flour remaining in the dough. Cover the dough with a towel and let the dough rest for about 20 minutes. So the dough starts to develop the gluten and it is ready to add the flat seeds. After the 20 minute rest, add the flax seeds and fold the dough to incorporate all the flax seeds. By adding the seeds, we are adding some hydration to the dough. So keep folding until your dough has a consistency like this one. And it doesn't stick to the walls of your bowl. It will take you a couple minutes. Then cover the dough with a towel and let it rest for 20 minutes. Start a series of stretches and folds to help your dough develop strength. Stretch the dough and fold it on itself and cover it with a towel. Let it rest for 20 minutes. And repeat the same process. The more you let the dough rest, the more elastic it will become. Cover it one last time and wait for 20 minutes. On the last stretch and fold, use both of your hands and stretch the dough to create a ball of dough. Then grease a 9 by 13 inch or 23 by 33 centimeter glass baking dish and place the dough with the seam side down in the middle of the baking dish. Grease all the walls of the baking dish well and cover the glass baking dish with plastic wrap or a plastic lid. I am letting this dough rest overnight at about 68 degrees Fahrenheit or 20 degrees Celsius. Or you can place it in the fridge to proof for at least 12 hours. The next morning, the dough is ready. So carefully, take a grease silicone spatula and separate the dough from the walls of the glass baking dish. Dust your working table with plenty of all-purpose flour and place the baking dish upside down so the dough falls by itself on the working table. Use the silicone spatula to push the edges of the dough in to make a well-shaped rectangle of about 9 by 12 inches or 23 by 30 centimeters. Then dust the dough with all-purpose flour and very carefully cut the dough in 9 pieces. Use the silicone spatula to separate well the pieces of dough. Now prepare the oven to bake your rolls. Place in the base of the oven a cast iron pan and place a baking steel or baking stone and preheat the oven at 425 degrees Fahrenheit 
or 220 degrees Celsius. I am placing my rolls on my pizza peel on top of a parchment paper sheet so I can place them on the baking steel. If you don't have a baking steel, you can place your rolls on any baking sheet. Be careful as you transfer the rolls to the pizza peel. Your silicone spatula has to be dusted with flour so that it doesn't stick to the dough of your rolls. Leave some space in between the rolls as you place them on the pizza peel. Spray the rolls with water and sprinkle some of your favorite seeds on top. I love to use black and white sesame seeds because they are very tasty and they give the bread an improved look. Carefully place the bread rolls on the hot baking steel and fill the hot cast iron pan with ice to create steam inside of your oven as you bake your loaves. Bake for about 30 minutes or until the rolls are golden brown. Remove the rolls from the oven and let them cool off for about 30 minutes before eating. These rolls are very soft and delicious. And now, look at that crumb. It is not tight and dense, but open and airy. I love to eat these rolls in the morning or at lunch with my favorite cheese, but honestly, they are so delicious when you eat them only with butter. The seeds improve the already delicious taste and give an incredible texture. And how about slicing this bread for dinner with any good pasta or a good pot roast? Mmm, the possibilities are endless. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this video, please click on the like button. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. I have a new video every week.